Hello, my friends. So uh, by now you might know that if you did this experiment where you varied the mass of the system and measured acceleration, you'll see that, uh, well, as system mass increases, acceleration decreases. This is data I collected. All right, and furthermore, you'll see the following. If you look, if you got good results, which I did, look at this. My system mass from this case to this case increased by a factor of two. You'll notice that my system acceleration decreased by a factor of two. That is the nature of the inverse relationship. Whatever you do to one thing, you do the opposite to the other. All right. Now, you'll also notice that one meter per second squared is not in my range of accelerations. All right? Um, so I'm going to use Excel to graph my data. And you should, too. And here's what I'm going to do. First, you've got to make sure that the stuff you want on the x-axis is to the left of the stuff you want on the y-axis. And my stuff is. So I'm going to select it all, go to Insert, Go to charts. I want to use the one without any connected dots. Beautiful. A nice inverse graph. Okay, I don't know. You can title this what you want. Blah, 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 blah. And remember, you can do things up in chart tools here in design. Yeah. Oh, you can do it right here. Axes titles. Why not? Sure. Blah, 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 blah. What I'm more concerned about is getting our trend. Okay? Right click. Remember, right click on these data points. We can add a trend line. Now, it certainly is not linear. All right? And here's what we, uh, what we said at one point. Is we said that inverse means that the Y stuff is proportional to 1 over the x stuff, right? Well, there's another way to write this. 1 over x is the same as x raised to the negative 1, the inverse, raised to the negative 1, all right? So what the function that we're actually looking for is a power function. This one, power, power. There you go. Okay, you can make one of these ones fit it, I'm sure, but we really, we're saying that it's a power one, and ideally the power that this thing picks is to the negative one. We can prove that it's pretty darn close to that, but um, for right now, we're, we've done what we need to do. Now, the problem is, right, we only go up to, this, these are our accelerations on the y-axis, so they only go up to 0.6. I need them to go up to 1, so here's what you do. You do this forecast thing. All right, and you got to forecast, well, backward. I'm going to go backward this way. And here you have to monkey around with it. How many periods? I don't know what periods mean. Maybe these are periods like 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2. See how we were here at 0.2. So I'm going to try, what if we forecasted back like, like doo -doo -doo to here, 1 .5, or 0.15. Yeah, pretty good. Look, there's one. I don't need all this stuff, so maybe if I go back 0.10. So you're just going to have to monkey your... Oh, that's almost perfect. Yeah, you're going to have to monkey around with that until you get... Look, we get our 1.0 acceleration. Okay? And now what you can do, like we said you want to be able to do... I'm going to right-click or just click around and... Yeah, add... I right-clicked on these numbers. Add minor grid lines, that helps. This is a nice big graph. That'll help, too. All right. And what you'll do, I would print this graph if I, if I were you. All right. And what we want to be able to do is, on your printed graph, literally, do this. Here's one. There's where it intersects my trend. So what's that? what amount of uh, system mass accelerates at one 
meter per second per second. And why isn't that system mass one kilogram? I think we're talking about a newton. Oh, right, because I didn't use a net force of one newton. I used a net force of that. And then based on that, well, what would one newton do? Okay. So the trick here, again, is that forecast back or forecast forward thing. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'll just go through that one more time. Format trend line. Here it is. All right. Forecast. And you're going to go back. Well, I don't know. It depends on what your range of data is. But just make sure you end up with a 1 on this uh, y-axis. Your, your trend doesn't have to stop right at 1. That was a coincidence that mine did. If it, if it uh, goes back farther than that, fine. No problem. As long as 1 is in your y, your y range. Okay? Okay, people. Adios.